In this example, I'll show you how you can use the Y delta transformation along with KCL, KVL, and Ohm's law to solve this particular circuit. So in this circuit, we're given um, one source and a few resistors, and they're um, connected in this particular pattern. And we're asked to use the Y delta to compute the I0, I1, and I2. This is I1, this is I2, and this is I0 in here. And then we were also asked to compute the power um, provided by the source. Pretty much like let's reduce these into their equivalent and figure out what the power um, produced by um, the source. So the, because we're asked to use Y delta transformation, I can see a bunch of them in here. Um, and you can pause the video and just basically think which Y delta transformation we want to use. Um, and I've decided to basically look at this particular Y delta in here for no particular reason. And in most of your cases, um, you will be eliminating one of the I's. So what am I saying in here is I'll be basically eliminating the 20, the 50, and the 100. By eliminating the 100, I basically eliminated the 120 in the equivalent circuit. So I'll have to go back to this circuit and do something about it. But I should be able to figure out what I1 and I0 is. So this conversion from the Y to a delta will result in the elimination of I2, which is something that I'm interested in finding out. So I'll have to basically um, keep track of what's happening so that I can come back to this circuit. But anyway, if I actually decided to do this here and I decided like, okay, I'm going to convert this to a delta. I usually draw my delta in here. So this is how it looks like. And I'll have another resistor in here and I'll have another resistor in here. Okay, and I should be able to compute these resistors. So if we call this my RA, and this is basically my RB, and this is here my RC, um, we can compute these resistors. So let me just do these computations. So we will see the RA is simply, well, we're converting from a Y to a delta. So it's simply, I have to basically multiply 100 times 20, and then 20 times 50, and then 50 times 100. And then if I'm interested in the RA, I'll divide by the 50. So let me just write this out. So it is um, simply, here it's 100 times 20 plus um, I believe 20 times 50 plus I believe 50 times 100 and then we divide it if I'm interested in this R of A I'll have to divide it by the 50 okay and that will result into 160 ohms and you should be able to figure out the RB will be um, very similar so it'll be 8000 but this time for the RB um, where is RB? RB is here, so it'll be divided by 20. So that will be 800 divided by 2, that's 400 ohms. Okay, and RC will be also 8000. Okay, where is RC? So RC is um, here, so that will be basically divided by 100 in here. Okay, and that will be simply 80 ohms. So I should I was able to convert these um, this Y into the delta, so I'll have to redraw the circuit so that I can see it. All right, so I went ahead and I redrew that circuit. So you will see the one amp uh, source is still the same, the 240 is still the same. And now instead of having that Y pattern, what I have is the RA, RB, and RC. You can see them RA, RB, RC. They're 160, um, 480. The 320 is still here. Um, that's not 320 amps. That is um, simply, um, I believe it's just ohms, not amps. Okay, so let me just correct that. So that here is ohms. And then of course we have 600 ohms in here, still the same. All right, so now the I2 obviously disappeared because it was um, across the 100 ohms and the 100 ohms disappeared, but the I1 is still there, so I highlighted it in here, and the I0 is still here, so I highlighted it in here. Okay, and we're, again, as a reminder, we're, um, we're asked to compute I0, 1, and 2, and I should be able to compute them here by now. All right, so what we need to do is um, we need to simplify the circuit a little bit more, and what I will do actually is I'll, I'll try to use maybe um, current division since I have that, but I can't apply current division unless I have um, parallel um, connected resistors, and I'll highlight some of the resistors that are connected in parallel. So this one here are, and this one here are connected in parallel, and they're not connected to parallel to anything else. These two are connected in parallel, and I have these two are connected in parallel. So what I'm going to do is I basically um, reduce all these um, into uh, a simpler circuit, and we'll see um, what will happen. So by reducing um, these resistors and combining them, we'll get 240 for these two, uh, ohms we get 64 for these two and we get 96 for these two in here that I highlighted in red and obviously because we did these simplifications the I not disappeared because it's part of those and the I one disappeared so I'm um, I ended up with those here okay 
All right, so that's that's fine now. Can we apply current division? Not yet, because I still have to combine these two in order for me to apply current division for it. Um, so in order for me to figure out what this current in here, I have to combine the 64 and the 240. So let me just do that. At this point, we combine um, the 240 and the 64 into 304 ohms. And of course the 96 stays the same and the one amp, now we can apply a current division and maybe go backwards. So for example, if I call this here, um, let me just call this one maybe i y and this call this one i of x. So I should be able to figure out what i x is. So i x is simply um, one amp times 96 divided by 96 plus 304. And that will be 0 0.24 amps or you can say it's 240 milliamps as well. All right. So that's fine. So now how useful is this X? Well, let me just highlight it in here. So this here is simply I of X. So I of X is the same I of X in here. Let me highlight it in pink. Okay, so this I of X is the one because they're in series. So it's the same I of X going in here and in here. So if you think about it here, um, where is the I of X? Well, I of X is the one that is going and it gets divided between the 320 and the 80, and it also gets divided between these two, since these are basically the equivalent resistance. So I'm um, technically, basically, I have I of X coming in here. It actually gets split to these I1 and gets, uh, gets split in here. And of course, it gets split in here and gets split in here, and they get merged again. So I can use a voltage or current division um, here to figure out what I1 and I2 is. Okay, so let me just do that. So I can technically just um, do this here. I can just say, well, I1, this is um, the one I'm interested in. Okay, so I1 is simply I of X, which we computed to be that value times well, I1 is the one going through this resistor, so it's 80 divided by 80 plus 320. So times 80 divided by 80 plus 320. Well, I know the I of X is simply 0 0.24 okay, amps. So that number would be, that will be 0 0.048 amps, or that will be 48 milliamps. Okay, so we were able to compute I1. We should be able to compute I0 in the same way. So I0 is simply 0 0.24, but this time, let's see, it actually gets in here. So these, because again, um, the I of X is the source because it is the one that gets split between these two. And it's the one that gets split in between in here. So I'm interested in I0, that means I'm gonna take 400 divided by 600 plus 400. So it's 400 divided by 400 plus 600, which is basically a thousand which um, which equates to 0 0.096 amps or simply 96 milliamps. All right, so we were able to find I0 and I1. So we can go back in here and we'll figure out, well, um, we got that this one here happened to be 96 milliamps and the I1 happened to be 8, 48 milliamps. This is 48 milliamps. So now we were we, we need to actually find I2. And we can't find I2 in here because this is a circuit that actually I2 disappeared. So we're gonna have to think about it here. So frankly speaking, we probably can figure out what this um, current going through the 50 ohm is because we could write KCL in here. We have what the I1 is and we have the I0 and these are the only three currents so we can figure out what the I50 is. So let me just write this in here. I can call it, for example, I50 ohms, okay? And pretty much I can write it in here. So I50 ohms um, or I50, let me just call it I50 is simply uh, I0 minus I1, I believe because I50 and I1 are basically the same, so they're on one side. And you can substitute these values, and they're basically 96 minus 48, and that will be 48 milliamps, okay? So we know the current going through the 50, but this isn't something we're looking for. But what we can do now is, now that we know we're using KCL, we were able to figure out this current, so we know the voltage across this 50 ohms, we know the voltage across this one here because we know the current, we know the 600, so we can write a KCL equation right here and here. So let me just do that. Okay, so we're gonna, oh sorry, KVL equation. So we're gonna do a KVL equation right here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna assume that this here is a plus, this one here is a minus, this is a plus, this is a minus, and then we can assume that this is a plus, this is a minus, okay? 
All right, so let me just do that here. We're going to do KVL at that loop, and that KVL tells me, well, what we're interested in is the following. So we have, um, we'll start with this particular V, and this particular V is simply negative I2 times 100. Why is it negative? Because the current is hitting the negative, so we're going to do negative based on passive sign convention, and Ohm's law tells me it's I2 times 100, so that's I2 times 100. I R basically. All right, so we're going to go back to the or again to this one here. So do we know this current in here? Yes, we did compute the current and we said that this basically I 50 or I 50, we decided that this is the um, direction. So we can say, well, um, it is plus 50 times I 50, which we computed to be 48 milliamps, okay, times 10 to the negative three for the milliamp, and then plus in here the current is going to the positive side the current went to the positive side here so passive sign is okay and it's correct plus um, that's simply um, 600 times the i naught which is 96 milliamp times 10 to the negative 3 and that equals zero so we can solve this and we'll figure out what i2 is and i2 happened to be 0 0.6 amps or simply 600 milliamps So at this point, we were able to compute all the currents that we're looking for and all the voltage or the I1, I2, and I0. And we're also asked to compute the power supply by the current source. We can actually go all the way down and we can say, well, I can probably figure out the voltage across the um, current source. I can either combine these and figure out the power um, dissipated in this equivalent resistor and go about it. Basically, it's the same because the power supplied is the power absorbed. Or I can just figure out the voltage across one of these resistors. I know the current, so I can figure out the voltage. Well, I know the current across the X, I of X, so I know the current across that 304. So let's figure out what the V is. So this is the V in here. So I'm going to call it V. So V is simply I times R, which is 304 that's the r times i of x which is 0 0.24 okay and that will be i believe it's 72.96 um, volt okay so if the voltage across that um to that current is that way that means the power of the source is simply negative because the current is hitting the negative port first or negative um the negative sign first so it's negative 72.96 times one amp, which is simply negative 72.96 watts. Yeah, 72.96 watts.